Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we're going to be playing some more historic best of three decks and uh, another brew and another brew around a new alchemy card. Uh, same card as the last time, but we're playing Orzhov this time instead of Demir. And I think this card is close to busted and probably uh, potential in historic, maybe, especially in Luris piles, to require a nerf potentially. Um, two mana painful bond, instant speed draw two, and then cards in your hand with mana value three or less perpetually cost uh, or make you um, pay a life or you lose a life. Um, low to the ground aggro deck, uh, generally what I like. This could be a Luris pile, but I think the cards you're getting in here at the higher CMC are worth it. Um, and also you provide less information. Generally speaking, if you're slotting up with a Luris deck, your opponent's going to think you're on food, lure, or auras, stuff like that. Um, this gives them a little less information going in, um, that they're not going to be as aggressive to maybe mull into some removal early. Um, so it's kind of a, I don't want to call it straight death and taxes, it's like good individual creatures that could uh, attack in multiple axes with some disruption mixed in. Um, so we have Esper Sentinel, which draws us cards when your opponent casts non-creatures. Uh, we have Knight of Eben Legion, which gets bigger and can kind of just snowball on its own. Um, Thoughtseize and Fatal Push as ways to interact with creatures. Uh, Auras is popular, a lot of cheap creature decks. Um, we have Sun Gold Sentinel, which can eat at the graveyard uh, and also can get pseudo uh, vigilance in a way. We have Adanto Vanguard. Um, I don't know how good Vanguard is anymore, but it's kind of one of my pet cards. We're going to play a couple games, see how it plays out. If it's decent, we'll keep it. If not, we'll replace it by something else. Um, some Fateful Absence uh, as well. Um, I wanted another two mana removal spell, but I wanted something that wasn't dead in the control matchups. So Fateful Absence can get rid of a Teferi or something like that. Um, because generally speaking, your Fatal Push are pretty dead in that matchup. And we're not playing anything like Season Pyromancer in this build, so we don't necessarily have a way of uh, throwing away our excess cards. Um, Trying out a couple Adeline. There's a few cards you can play here um, in this slot, but I think Adeline on its own presents enough of a threat um, where, again, your opponent needs to answer it. If they don't, uh, you're able to just kind of snowball from there, um, as well as Graveyard Trespasser. This, for the most part, your opponent has to two for one you, um, and it's another way to eat at the graveyard. So we have eight main board graveyard hate and then two more in the form of hive of the eye tyrant and then a couple soren the mirthless as a way to just draw some cards some lifelink uh, you get some lifelink off the trespasser as well um, mana base is very very good in orzov because we have both the concealed courtyard as well as the shattered sanctum um, and then we have uh, hives as well as cave ajanjo and takanuma all utility lands in there um, the sideboard, we got portable holes for like the auras matchups, weenie matchups, stuff like that. Uh, Faithful Absence, another copy here. Some copies of Vanishing Verse, also good. A Fracture is just a catch-all removal, can hit a lot of things here. Um, Deafening Silence is something I wanted to try out, and my thought was this over Thalia. And this is good against, um, if we look at something like auras, chaining multiple cards together, it limits them at one. If we look at Phoenix, it prevents them from casting Phoenix. Um, so it's kind of a way to slow down our opponents, hopefully, that way. Uh, we have two Rest in Peace in the deck as Graveyard Hate. Nothing really in our deck cares about the Graveyard, so we're able to attack in that axis. Um, some copies of Go Blank to attack the hand and more Graveyard Hate. Basically, the theme here is Historic is a Graveyard format, so we want to be able to like hit it. And then some City Stalker Connoisseurs as a way in the grindier matchup. So control, anything where we're going back and forth. It just provides a lot of utility. Just taking out the biggest uh, card from their hand and kind of going from there. So I haven't tested this. We played something similar um, in a Tempo Shell. If you haven't seen this, this video is up on YouTube. It's a Demir kind of rogue Tempo with Kaido. Um, very similar, looking to use the Painful Bonds. And that card stood out quite a bit. Uh, we got up to like 511 Mythic, we're down to 534, but let's play some games and see how this one plays out. Historic ranked, best of three. So really what we want to do is like, you know, get one or two threats out early, disrupt our opponent and just kind of grind out. Um, I'm hoping that our ways to attack the graveyard and then 
two mana draw two refills our hand pretty well. I was thinking originally of doing this as a shadow deck, but there's a lot of ways for your opponent to kind of go over the top. There's drain, there's life gain, plus like a shadow just gets nerfed by a cat in Cat Oven. Um, so not the best there. Okay, sand looks good. So I have the choice of either Knight on one or Fatal Push. Hmm. Interesting to see a Lovestruck Beast. Not a card you see that often. Um, we're probably going to draw two this turn. Mono green. Stompy, perhaps. Probably going to just Painful Bond this turn. So if I could find another one drop or even a two drop so I can double spell this turn. Okay, that's actually really good. Another painful bond. Let's see if the opponent wants to trade here. We didn't play anything like Noxious Grasp. Come through. So I'm gonna wait till their turn just because, like, it might change the way they play. And if they have something like Snakeskin Veil, Tamio's Safekeeping. So we do kind of get boned by that, but can't do much there. Um, here. Kill this. Let's get rid of safekeeping here. I think we just go Trespasser, gain a life. So what we can do here is we can pass the turn. Flip this to Knight, so we'll take another 5 spot here. They had priority, the lair could be providing it. Soren's nice as well, but you know, maybe we do go Soren here. Because I can throw on some double blocks, and then next turn I can do both of these. Ah, Arc Ranger. You don't see much stompy going around nowadays. See if they go with the fight here or the stomp. This isn't a deck like I was going to be playing around. It's 12 damage coming in. Um... I think we block like this. I'm gonna take the six here. Okay, so we have Adeline. So I need to cast this first. You're a three, four. Cause that puts it up to eight.
You were lucky to I think we're just cashing in Soren here. I could have played this first, but then this makes me lose a life, and my life's kind of a resource at this point. We've already seen two Fatal Push, so it's a little harder. We have Vanishing Verse post board, makes it a little easier. Let them decide how they want to do this math. If they have inscriptions to put two counters on, or Tamiyo's safekeeping, it's pretty bad. Like, we did kind of get hurt by that main board safekeeping. Yeah. That sucks. The double safekeeping. You hate to see it. Second love struck. This gets trample as well. The Janjo is not bad. The problem is like they're gonna get the trample off it. Yeah, I'm dead here. I could have activated that, but... Hmm. Could be interesting. The thing is, they have um, Hive as well. Yeah, we just... We didn't draw what we needed that game. Okay, let's bring in better removal. Things I didn't think I'd have to play against today. Love Struck Beast. Faithful Absence. Let's bring in the Verse. Let's bring in the Portable Holes. Let's bring in the City Stalkers. Um, graveyard Trespassers. Probably not good enough. As well as Adanto. Doesn't seem great here. Actually, seeing Adanto, we probably just want these instead. I don't want the Thought Season this matchup. The Death Touch on City Stalker will be good. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to play around safekeeping. I thought they'd be playing uh, right, uh, the, the the one counter, Snakeskin Veil. Uh, I think we mulligan. Okay, this has removal at least. Um, let's do this. Not a great card in this matchup, but again, like if this was a more prevalent deck, we'd have tools. The Noxious Grasp, there's more targeted removal. We have push on two. Knowing that they have the safekeeping, we're going to try to do, be more proactive with this. Um, let's see if they want to trade here. The fact that this got them to take a turn off is pretty good. We'll take that, because next turn I just drop City Stalker. Let's 
see what we got discarded, like Vivian, hopefully. Great Henge. Okay. This is good because now we have this. I wouldn't mind like a hive. Master. See if they want to trade off here. So the nice thing is I could turn on revolt at instant speed with the city stalker uh, blood token. So I can get this love struck out of the way. That's actually really good. So I'm not doing this because it could play into cities. So my thought here, if they go Guile, uh, we'll get rid of the Henge here in case they have any ways to revive. No, we'll just keep these up. Collected Company. We do this. We get this downgraded, but I don't want to get blown out by safekeeping. I think we just try to race here. They have another. Coco, I can't do anything. The fact we got two henges out of their hand and they still have Coco. Jeez. Yeah. Let's see if we have verse. Nope. Again, just not seeing our removal is pretty bad here. cards. Yeah, I'm pretty dead here. We'll just go to the next one. Again, I'm not too worried because that's not really a deck that you see that often. Mono Green's not really showing up in any tournaments, anything like that. Our removal and like how I built this deck was to focus on Phoenix, Blue White, some food decks, Auras. Historical sometimes get you that way where you're going to get these big chunky decks, but we're both creature decks, they go slightly bigger than us in terms of the curve. Play number 44 on the ladder. That first game we got all card draw, second game we got none. Okay, so they're Luris deck and uh, Shuffler's rigged. I'll keep this, put back on a Danto. Okay, so there's a good chance they're on Auras. Nope, oh, food. You know it sucks against food? Okay, so they mulliganed. They're on Meat Hook or... I think we take the Meat Hook here. We definitely would have taken trail. So 
So I'm just going to be mana efficient because next turn I can double spell. So they can go... They can do this and then sack with the Cauldron Familiar to make this two. What we can do is um, Knight here. Yeah, they go Squirrel. No blocks here. Opponent's just uh, outclassing us. Okay, so my thought here, I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna pay four. I know they're going to get the cap back, it's going to drain me, but I need to work to the Soren, and then this 4 life puts a counter on Knight of Even Legion. Interrupt. Sorry. As many of you know, my dog hears voices out in the room, thinks there's a party going on in here. Okay, so they failed to find, which is great. Uh, this is sacrifice an artifact or a creature, so we're just going to main phase this so they don't get that, the ability. They can sacrifice it to itself, which I don't want them to get. And honestly, at this point, I'm probably trade. Oh my god, are you kidding me? So now I can never win. So that's one of the problems with these Cat Oven decks. So here, we want portable holes. Probably take another Fateful. Take the Verse, I'll take Fracture. Um, this is a grindier matchup, so I don't think I want the Thought Seize. They are on Paladin class. Oh, Danto could come out for sure. I don't think I want Adeline, but I'll probably bring in the City Stalkers. Rest in Peace does shut off. Okay, I think we do it like that. Because Rest in Peace shuts off their graveyard nonsense. They can't Cat Oven. So they'll probably bring in like Fatal Push stuff. No white mana. This hand looks good. I'm gonna put the Trespasser back in the dark. No, I'm gonna put a land back. So I'm going to play this tapped. I don't want to take too much damage right now. Of course if they do that on one, but... Okay. So I'm not using hole because hole can hit trail or um, oven. Did I bring in? I think I brought in the fracture, right? I brought in the Fracture. Yeah, so I can hit the Fracture next turn. Um, I think I want to start putting some pressure on them. Because this will force them to play some spells. 
If they go cat oven, I can hit the oven. Because if I just do this, I'm giving them time to set up and draw out of it. And that's pretty good. Okay, so they're an Ani cult version. So that's definitely going in the hole. So we'll just keep eating at their graveyard. Um, this will tax him for the turn. The question is, do I want to pay this right now? It's a good question. They might not have red mana. Well, they'll have it off the treasure, which is fine. What is the likelihood I find a one drop? It's actually pretty high, so I'm going to main phase this. Jeez. Only hitting lines there feels pretty bad. Still get that. They gain some life. Our deck refuses to give us anything but lions, which is super cool. I don't think we're a meat hook deck. It's hard for like the us as a mid-range deck to grind with these types of decks just because they're getting so much incidental like you know they drain us for for one they create a token they draw a card all in like one shot and then with cat oven it's like nickeling and diming us Show me the cat and we'll concede. <laughs> you hate to see it. We're dead here. Let's give this one more. Let's see how it goes. Again, it's just going to be a little tough given... Uh, the deck itself, like in that matchup, that's probably our worst matchup. Give me a Phoenix player. Give me a, let's not do a deck where they have meat hook main and I'm playing a bunch of X ones, twos and some threes. It'd also be cool if I could keep a hand. Um, let's try this. I don't know if Fatal Push will be good in the matchup. I don't know what they're on. Blue Light Control or Auras. They are on Affinity. I don't know how this matchup goes. So I think we draw for the turn here. Would have loved just sequencing to be able to... That's actually really good, because now I can 
Because they have counters, I want to do this main. And now I can play out both of these. Fade attacks. Deal. Oh no, my graveyard, which I don't do anything out of. However, will I financially recover from this? Um, they don't have blue mana. So this is a good time to try to sneak down Soren. We'll take one damage. For the sake of all innocent, I will this being a flying blocker. For me now. They have like a lot of like spell pierce s metallic rebuke style effects. That. Um, call for dire tactics. Do I want a painful bond? Because it's likely they have a counter spell. So I think we do one painful bond this turn, and then I'll do one next turn. Then run the trespasser into. Do that. There's no sense of us playing into counter magic. Um, we'll take action here. That's their whole turn. It's pretty good for us. Um, they can't really sweep in this deck, so... Let's get Trespasser going. Oh, that stacks! Okay, that's good to know. Um, they usually can't reanimate stuff, but the nice thing is this did that point of damage to put a counter on this. Cool. That one worked pretty well. And now we can bring in, like, Fracture. So we got Portable Holes, Fracture, Verse. Verse is kind of an edge case where it's not fantastic. I don't think we want Adeline here. City Stalker with Death Touch is probably decent. Probably the Fateful. Chances they can multi spell in a turn is pretty high, but I think we take that. Vanguard seems bad here. Overall, Vanguard hasn't been great. I think we're just going to overall cut Vanguard. I think I still want the Thoughtseize. And we saw like what Esper Sentinel could do there. Probably just trim on a sun gold. Yeah, probably just a sun gold. Do I want a verse? They have thought monitor. They have that white mana creature. We have like eight removal spells for their stuff. I think we're okay. Fracture hits a lot of it too. We'll see when the, what they bring in post board. If they bring like Karn and stuff, then. Yeah, Sent looks good. Let's go Sentinel on one. 
start the tax early into thought sees sentinel just shred their hand Ejanjo is like low key pretty you know what I should have well I couldn't have double thought sees anyways um they don't have double white, so we can take a portable hole. This taxes them for the whole turn, and then I have a Zhanjo next turn to get rid of this Smith. I would love if you could give me something other than a land. So they're kind of inclined to play this. I need a Zhanjo this turn because this is going to get bigger. Can't counter that. So I think here we just pass. I don't want to do this now and I, I want to be able to pay the tax. Oh my goodness. Um. Play that tapped. Uh, we'll decline here. There was a thing I could have fateful absence my own thing. Let's just see if they throw out something else. I don't want to play the land. Get him to discard. That was a really good draw because now I can chuck this away. But then bringing so much cheap exile, we need to keep that in mind. We might not want the Adantos on the play. just to put some pressure. Holy hell. Destroy and that's big. I'm just gonna hold this land. They don't have haste, so we don't need to worry about that. That's scary. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, so we do need to pressure the Karn here. So Cave can take out the Karn next turn, but I think that Karn is probably GG for us. <laughs> Karn into Nettlesist? Like, this opponent top decks Nettlesist, Karn, Nettlesist. We've drew one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines. Um, think we still want the thought sees. 
City Stalker was good. Still want the painful. Honestly, I think we just run it back. Maybe do a split like that. Verse just doesn't hit much here. Sec, there's a bug that flew in here. Oh, this hand looks good, but is also pretty bad. Okay, we'll keep this. Let's put planes away. What I could have done was um, Alternate order. Okay, so let's see if they want to take the block. We'll auto pay here. Jeez. Carntron. Um, if I could take out a Karn. do that because if they want to double block I'll trade off okay, so that means that they're not double blocking me we'll exile this So face up, we know they have this. So I'm going to do this because it just doesn't let them play their spells for the turn. They discard another card. So they go Karn here. I do Painful. Problem is, I'm gonna give him a card draw anyways. Really unfortunate. I would have hit the land. I think we just need to do this and then just auto pay for the turn. It's, it's not anything great, but. The problem is that pumps this up too. Okay, so that's a good start. That's not a good start. So I'm going to have to do this. Take seven there. Okay, that's actually pretty nice. Um, I think we just gotta do that. I can't let them draw more cards. Their double sentinel draw against our like heavy spell based draw. If we were able to tax them a bit, it'd be good, but. We're gonna 
have to auto pay here. Yeah. Now I gotta block like this. We were hoping they didn't have the counter. We're dead. Doesn't matter, because I have to pay the tax, so they just draw cards and they draw into counter. I'm surprised they kept the rebukes in, but this one didn't work out. The, the, the other one worked out a lot better, but sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. We're trying them out, seeing what goes. Um, you can see the idea of what we're trying with the deck, it just didn't follow through. But let me know what you think. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching.